Hi everyone, back with another video, and today I'm gonna go over some of my favorite affordable beginner style fragrances that feature the note of oud. These fragrances are all going to be synthetic ouds, they're not real ouds. Real oud fragrances are extremely expensive. Uh, synthetic ouds are a nice way to smell, um, not necessarily like oud, they don't have the same life and vibrancy and depth that the real oud will have, but they have this dark wood, sometimes funky, sometimes animalic undertone to them that can come alive on your skin and give you that same sensation as real oud. I dabble in perfumery myself, and so I'm very familiar with oud, synthetic ouds, and I have a few of them here just to show you guys. But stuff like this one here, this is called Black Agar from Fermaniche. And this one here is a very um, intense synthetic oud. It smells kind of, to me, it has this um, mechanic shop smell to it. It's rubbery, kind of, and oily, and dark, and robust, and just uber masculine smelling. It smells like a workshop, and a little bit in a formulation goes a very long way. It can easily take over the entire formulation if you go too high of percentage. Another one here is Black Agar by Giveco. It's another synthetic. This one here is delicious. Um, this is probably one of my favorite synthetic ouds. It's a very, very usable in formulation that doesn't take over. It's, it's a dark wood that smells like mahogany. It, just imagine this really dense, dark wood carved. Um, I go to like an African wood, maybe a teak wood, something down that line, kind of driftwoody. It's very, very nice, smells exotic smells foreign to me. There's no woods here in Northern America that smell like this to me. And it's very nice in a formula. It kind of has hints of tobacco and oak in it. Another one here by Fermanish again is called Pretty Oud. And this one has a little bit more animalics. It smells a little bit like civet with dark wood and lots of florals. So, this one here um, a little bit goes a long way again and it can give that sensual musky skin sweaty skin type of smell to your formulas and it can um, really really change a formula and take it in a certain direction so those are kind of just a few of the synthetics that i am familiar with but going into my five fragrances here that i would recommend starting with to get your nose on some of these synthetics. I actually am gonna start with an honorable mention just because I love this fragrance, but it doesn't actually have the note of oud in it. This is uh, by Salvatore Ferragamo and it's just titled oud. Now, I don't know why they titled oud because from what I can see online, it doesn't actually feature the note of oud at all. But what it is, is a very spicy, green, um, robust, masculine fragrance that I'm quite addicted to. I wear this one quite a bit. I feel that you can wear it winter, summer, spring, fall. It's very versatile. It's super spicy. So if you like spicy fragrances, try this one out. It's just an honorable mention. I, I don't smell oud in it, so I, I don't know why they call it oud, but I thought I'd mention it. So I'm going to talk about these in order of how I like them and how I wear them. <clears throat> I'm going to start with my least favorite, work my way all up to my favorite. So starting here with my least favorite at number five, we have Hugo Boss Oud Aromatic. And this one here is interesting to me because it features a synthetic oud, but it also is very, very fresh. Because the top note is orange blossom and the middle note is myrrh. So it's got this lemony, orangey, um, resinous filling to it that's quite fresh and quite sharp and piercing. This one takes a little bit of time to get used to, but it's one of those smells that once you like it, you start to really like it. And it's easy to create scent memories with because it smells very different from anything else in my collection. 
So if you wear it on a certain occasion or to a certain event, when you smell it again, it's gonna bring back those memories. It's very good at doing that. <clears throat> However, it's not the easiest to wear and it's not the easiest to like. So if you can get a sample of this one, I would recommend sampling it before you buy it, just because it is a little different from the most common fragrances, especially coming from Boss. It's a little surprising that it's coming from Boss because usually they specialize in very mass appealing fragrances. So that is number five. Number four, we got from the Dunhill Signature Collection. This one is called Arabian Desert. And um, this one here is a fairly common smelling saffron rose oud incense type of fragrance. It's got a Middle Eastern vibe, but in my opinion, it's more designer smelling than most Middle Eastern rose ouds. It's very approachable, very likable, and smooth. I think it's very well done for this market and the Western market, that is. I know that it's not going to be interesting enough for a lot of people that are into rose ouds, but as far as a beginner rose oud, this one is fantastic. It's very wearable in public. You don't, you know, you're gonna smell different, but you're gonna smell nice. It has this designer likability to it. Definitely recommend it just for trying out a rose oud if you're a little nervous about trying them. The rose in this one is kind of that jammy dark rose. It's not a bright floral feminine smelling rose at all. The saffron helps with it. It's kind of a leathery saffron. And the oud, the oud in the base is just the very mass appealing type of oud. There's no animalic to it whatsoever. The incense adds a slight smokiness, robustness to it overall. Very good beginner rose oud. That's my number four. Coming in at number three, we have another one from Boss. This one is just titled Boss Bottled Oud. This one here um, was a little bit surprising to me when I first got it because, once again, coming from Boss, I just expected it to be super mass appealing and to not hardly notice the oud. You, you would think they would just bury the oud, but not really in this one. This one here smells very similar to Boss Bottled, the original, plus um, a touch of something like this, this, this black agar I spoke about. It's got this masculine edge to it that's kind of almost animalic, but then it just fades away from that and goes back into the mass appealing direction, but it is teetering on the edge of being very oud forward. And so it, it surprised me a little bit, but I think that's a good thing because if you're after an oud smell, well, they're gonna give it to you here. At least they're not hiding it so deep in the fragrance that you're wondering, well, what's different between this and the original? This one here has the apple, it has the cinnamon, it has that sweetness, that mass appealing sweetness, but then it does have a huge punch of that oud. So it gives you a good idea of what synthetic oud smells like. And um, after you wear it a couple of times and try it out, I think you'll really, really start to enjoy it. And if you don't, then um, ouds may not be for you. So that is coming in at number three. And coming in at number two, we have one from Mansara. Uh, very, very easy to approach niche house. Um, their scents are usually very affordable for being niche. And typically people do rave about them because they have good projection, good longevity, lots of bang for your buck. This one in particular is called Aoud Lemon Mint. And this one does have oud in it, but it takes a while to come to the forefront. Mm, I just love this one. Um, this one, the oud is buried way down in the base of it, and it doesn't come out right at first. Right at first, you're gonna get this candied lemon smell, hence the name. Um, however, you're not gonna get any mint. I, I don't get any mint from this. Um, I, I don't know for sure if it's in the notes or not. Depending on where you look online, the notes can vary on this one. But personally, I don't smell mint. What I get is lemon, 
a candied sweet lemon paired with a lot of almond. So almond is a note in here and you get that definitely. It's this nutty creaminess paired with a sweet lemon. Then through the mids, you do get a little bit of white floral like a jasmine and that paired with that jasmine kind of leads you into the oud smell. In the base, there's vanilla, leather, and oud, and so you get this sweetness that comes through. There's a definitely a leatheriness that plays well with the oud. Some synthetic ouds, like I've mentioned, have a leatheriness to them already, so it's definitely in this one as well. And like I said at the beginning of this here, this one um, lasts forever on me. It's, it's an all-day fragrance, and it's, it's interesting in the fact that it's very thick smell, but it's not overwhelming, and so I find it very versatile. I wear it all year long. Cold, rain or shine, it seems to work just fine. So that is coming in at my number two. And coming in at number one, we have one more from Dunhill Signature Collection. And this one is called Agarwood. This one here surprised me when I smelled it at first. It's different than anything else I have in my collection. However, I find it very, very wearable and delicious. I'm gonna spray a strip here just so I can experience it again and kind of give you what I think of the top notes. Yeah, so the oud in this one is, is definitely synthetic again. I can tell that right off the top. But it's paired with, I, for some reason I get a a candy, like not necessarily candy, because candy can come across sour. This is more like oud paired with sugar. And it's this sweet powdery sugar, powdered sugar over oud that is just so addicting. The notes in this one is saffron, black iris, violet leaf, leather, tobacco, and oud. I definitely get the violet leaf, and I don't know if it's the black iris. I don't know what black iris smells like, but I don't know if that's giving me that sugary smell, but I definitely get some green violet leaf. I get the tobacco, I get the oud, I get just a hint of leather. It's not super leathery. Um, but it comes together to just create an intoxicating smell. I absolutely love this one. I would say that it's blended so well that it's hard to pick out individual notes. As you can tell, I'm struggling to tell you what it smells like because it just has a smell. But just imagine a dark wood, sugary sweetness, light, light powderiness, and then just this hint of violet leaf green masculine smell that goes through there. And that's what you get. And it gets um, really good performance. I get eight to 10 hours on this one. I don't know what the projection is like. It's hard to tell sometimes, I don't know. I think it's a little softer than a lot of these as far as projection goes, but that's not always a bad thing. Sometimes you wanna wear it in a big crowd where you don't want it to overwhelm. However, I would, out of all of these, I would definitely recommend trying to get your hands on this one. I don't know how long these are gonna be around. They're all over on eBay for like 55 to $65. And so it's an absolute steal of a deal for 100 ml like this. Definitely check out Dunhill Signature Agar Wood. So guys, that is my top five uh, with an honorable mention. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.